All right. Well, let's get started. So, hi everyone. My name is Rachel and welcome to today's live training webinar. Okay. I am so excited about today's training as it's designed to give you as much info as I can possibly give you without overloading your brain. I want to help you out there making online programs using videos so that you can help more people. So how does that sound? Today's training for the record is called Live Video Training Just for Women. So if you haven't already, grab your workbook as this is going to help you as we go along and it will keep a record of things you need to put in place. Now, can everybody hear me okay? Just checking. Okay. Excellent. Now, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Rachel Dunn and I love working with women, small business owners and entrepreneurs just like you. Helping you create very powerful videos, lifting your confidence and helping you get out there and making videos you never thought that you'd make. Expanding your audience reach and helping make online programs so you're able to help many more people that you never knew was possible. Now, I know that you're on this webinar today because you want to make your own videos, attract more clients and build an online program using video, right? So I'm going to show you what you need to do in order to make videos that you want to be making. So here's what we're going to talk about today. All right, so today we're going to go through how important perception is and how fear stops many of us making videos. I'll go through some tips on how you can take steps to overcome this very crippling fear. I'll also be going over the, your audience and how important it is to attract the right audience. So we'll go over the important questions that you need to ask yourself when making your videos that affect who you want to attract to watch your videos. So we'll also be covering the important production tips that I've used in all my video making in the last 20 years. So, you know, to keep you on track. Then we'll talk about what to do with your videos once you've created some amazing content. And if that's not enough, at the end of the hour, I'll be giving you some information on how you're able to work one-on-one -on -one with me so you can start making the videos you really want to make sooner. We have lots of valuable stuff to get through, so let's go. And if you have any questions, write them down because there's going to be a 30-minute Q&A at the end where you can throw all of your questions at me. So if anything happens technically and the webinar freezes for some reason, I'll log straight back on, so best to prepare for all these types of situations. So, let's get started. Now, you may or may not have heard my story, so let me tell you a little bit about myself now. Um, I believe that enthusiasm, determination and imagination, you can really do anything that you want to do. And I've applied this through everything I do. And I'm not saying it's been easy all the time, but it's the very thing that has gotten me to where I am today and I wouldn't change a thing. I feel very lucky to have worked in the media industry for 20 years now and I've tried many things with many people wouldn't dare to try. So, such things as pitching a film project to Richard Branson right at the moment when he was getting dressed. Through to taking on my biggest public fear speaking, public, <laughs> pub, my biggest fear public speaking in 2010, where I talked in front of two and a half thousand people all about ideas, branding, and girl director. Through to the other extreme, where I had my fair share of nasty comments calling myself girl director, and I've been knocked down, dusted myself off, and learned the lessons and got back up again, ready to take on the new chapter. So when I was about 15, I chose to become a director. We lived in a country town called Mount Gambier and whenever I told people that I wanted what I wanted to do when I left school, that I wanted to be a music clip director. You can imagine thinking, yeah, right. And people would often laugh, especially in a small country town. I feel very lucky growing up in a family who owned a record store. And I remember even asking bands when I was 14 years old if I could make their video clips. 
And it's amazing, you know, I had no fear in those days. So it wasn't long into my media course that I did um, that, you know, I got a job. Now, I didn't actually go the normal route where my friends went. I actually decided not to go to college. I went and did a course because I wanted to get straight into the TV industry because this is where I felt like I needed to get my, you know, my skill set up. So this is where um, I, you know, got, a, got into the media industry. So you know, I was actually waiting to go on a tour and I overheard somebody saying they really needed someone to work in their place. So something inside me said, just yell it out, just yell out, I'll do it. So I did and I ended up getting a job working as an animator for a kid's show called Molly Grubs. And funny enough, I didn't know how to animate at that time. I was just confident and I went with my inspiration and there I have it. Ten years later, working for that station, it's pretty cool, huh? So I worked in all facets of the industry and I worked with most, you know, a lot of the large TV stations as well as having my own business. And I moved from Mount Gambia to Adelaide to Sydney and I ran, started running my own business called Short, it was called Raw Vision Productions, thinking of another one, Raw Vision Productions. And at the same time, working within a safe environment of the TV station, I approached different record companies and making different music clips for some of Australia's biggest stars, including Shine for Vanessa Amorosi, John Williamson, Ida Buttrose, Adam Harvey, and many more. I was even nominated for a Golden Guitar for Best Music Video and had nomination on the ARIA Top 20. I worked full-time at Channel 10 at the same time, and I also worked at Channel 7 until redundancy hit in 2005. So I was completely shocked by what happened and it really rocked my world. I was also diagnosed with narcolepsy, which is a sleeping disorder where I just wanted to sleep all the time. And it was weird because you think that I'd, you know, want to continue working in a TV environment as I did before. But no, I, you know, found my confidence took a real knock when I was made redundant and I found it very tough. So I just really wanted to work from home for a while in the safe environment at home and um and then I decided to make a brand called Girl Director because you know as actually when I started making well when I thought of Girl Director in 2005 I always imagined her to be a character an online tool to help girls or women with video I had no idea what that actually looked like but this was a dream in 2005 And this is where the girl director chapter came. So I thought if I created a cheeky character that I'd be able to hide behind her and use her to create cutting edge marketing material, take risks. And, you know, I was a bit scared to use my own name. So it was good to use her. And so for five years, I really tried hard to make it work in lots of different ways. And I made lots of mistakes and I made, had lots of amazing successes, but I had a breakdown in 2010 and I worked myself to the bone and was exhausted. I was also dealing with a bullying issue in a space I was renting and my lawyer told me to get out of the space as they were, had been recording my IP and hired my staff. They wanted to learn how to do what I was doing. I was shocked at how some people operated and it really took me some time before I wanted to go out there and work for myself again. So these were all huge lessons and it's really brought me to where I am today. And this meltdown actually helped me stop and listen to myself and what I really wanted. Because only then it's when I heard a voice trying to be heard. And this voice was trying to tell me that I wasn't passionate about renting a studio space or competing in a cutthroat, you know, advertising world full of corruption. What I really wanted was to be making a difference in the world, whatever it was, with animals or women. I wanted to help those who didn't have a voice using the powerful medium of video. So with video being more accessible than ever now, I know with all my heart that it's important for me and my partner, Michael, who is also my business partner, who you will meet next webinar because we're going to do a a cool training structure that we haven't done before. And we are both here to help help teach and help women make videos and tell stories that they are, are very passionate about, which will help build their confidence and help them help more people. So this is this is why I started Girl Director in the first place. And you know, I couldn't believe it really took me so long to work out what I really wanted to do. 
So I feel very grateful to be working with incredible women now and seeing them make more and more powerful videos. Their confidence has grown and they're just loving the camera. Now, incredible, you know, now that we're surrounded by incredible supportive community, we just feel extremely lucky. Now, I'm also working, I thought I'd mention working with Emmy and Oscar Award winning inventor on a glo global film project called Symphony of the Earth. So as well as mentoring the most inspiring women with everything I know, I'm also working on this global project, making a difference in ways that are yet to be announced. And how amazing is that? I'm doing everything I love and I couldn't have got here without going on the journey that I have been on. So I know that I need to help women get their message out there, help them be a stand for them and help them see themselves bigger than they see themselves. Working with passionate people who are really determined like I was to get out there but not sure how. So here I am ready to help you get your stuff out there. So that's enough about me. Let's get stuck in today's workbook and start giving you some training to help you make these online programs using video. Okay, so you may be thinking right now, I can't make videos. What do I know? Or perhaps you're so scared to be in front of the camera right now that you freeze every single time the, the record light comes on. You may also be thinking, well, who's going to want to see my stuff? And what if no one wants to watch me? Well, let me tell you, you are completely normal and you aren't alone in your thinking. Let me tell you that all those fears are completely normal, but until you take action, they will always be there in the back of your mind, preventing you from being the best inspired version of you that you can be. So firstly, I want to talk to you a little bit about why video is so powerful. Because I've been asked a few times, you know, Things like, I'm a business owner, why can't I just employ a voiceover artist or an actor because to make my videos? Let them do their job. Now, this is a fantastic question. You're the only one with the passion and determination and the vision for your company. Others may be inspired and love what you're about, but ultimately it is you who inspire others when you talk freely on the camera. When people are authentic, it's truly captivating and people are naturally drawn. It takes practice not to freeze up or pull a face or you know, not be the same as other people. But I am here to tell you that people want to see who is behind the photo or the brand. I used to think the same thing. After all, I created Girl Director to hide behind. And you know what? No one else is going to be as passionate mentoring women to step out of themselves to make videos as me. Now, I also wanted to talk a little bit about perfectionist. You know, we all think that we're not good enough, but I tell you, you need to step outside of that and just do it because every time you do anything, whether it's driving for the first time, whether it's reading for the first time, drawing for the first time, you always, you don't get it right the first time. And, you know, it's even like webinars. My first webinar, well, <laughs> it wasn't perfect, but the more you do it, the better you become. So a couple of facts that I really thought were worth mentioning about video to take away was video connects with people like nothing else. It educates, it connects, it tells stories, it shares journeys, it grows together, it engages people, it exposes the truth. And, you know, did you know that 2 billion videos are being watched on YouTube every single day? Yep, 2 billion videos every single day. That is 86.5 of internet users watch online video. Did you also know that every single minute, 24 hours of video is uploaded to YouTube every single minute? Yep, that's right, every single minute. So video is really powerful stuff. It talks directly to people, it connects people, it puts fear into people, it inspires people, it's fun, and it's showing parts of the world up like never before before and you know two examples that I can think of is look at what ted.com has done to inspire the world and open up new ways of thinking and inspiring others and look what animals Australia has been able to do for the cruelty of animals with their video content now a lot of it's quite confronting but at the same time look at what it has achieved exposure has just made global change and global reaction and people are coming on board and changing laws and rules like never before 
These are just two examples of how the world are coming together in ways never seen before. So video isn't going away. It's only become going to become more and more accessible to everyone. It is important that you take steps today so that you can confidently talk about your business and step into the person you want to be. I'm sure most of you here don't want to open your own, open your own Hollywood studio, but there's no reason that you can't adopt some of the same philosophies in the same way movie studios do. After all, marketing is incredible and precise. Advertising and movies are where I've, where I've you know, watched and learnt many of the things that I've developed for my own brand, such as the logo was inspired by James Bond and Charlie's Angels. It's important to find brands that align yourself with and that you connect with. As I'm sure many of you here today are probably, probably worried that you don't have enough time or money to set things in motion. But let me tell you, it's not as hard as you may think. It's just really important to be in action. Have an image in your mind where you want to be because we often like to put problems where there just isn't any and let fear hold us back. So for this one hour, I invite you to visualize that you are out there make, to make amazing videos, sharing with more people than ever before. So let's get started with perception. Now, this is number one on the workbook. So whatever you see and think in the world is exactly how the world shows up for you. Now, I know that seems a little crazy statement, but I thought, you know, the same thing myself until I experimented with the concept and found out how true it really is. And a story that I thought I'd share with you about perception is, you know, for a little while, you know, a little while, a few years ago now, I was working with an editor for a while and, you know, he wasn't creating the work that I, that I wanted. Um, he was slow and he really drove me crazy. And luckily, you know, I just learned about perception and I learned about that you always should look at somebody bigger than they see themselves, even if it doesn't seem true at that time. So I thought, okay, why not? I'm going to give it a shot with this guy. I'm going to just have a little experiment, play the game. So that day I went into the office and I imagined him being amazing and I started to see him differently. And you know what? It was like magic. Right in front of my, my eyes almost. It was like he had turned into that person. He started to be so helpful, open. His skills started, his skill level started to go up. And I just went, oh my God, like it, it and now I use it all the time. Because often, if I think somebody's not going to be good at editing, they often end up being that way. The same with design. If I often think that, then, you know, it, there is a fine line of intuition and perception. And I think you really need to have a think about, okay, what's going on here? Is this person really good? Am I putting something in the way? So these three words are very powerful for you to remember. You know, whatever your perception or your view is about something in the world, you are the one who projects it out and it comes back and reflects straight back at you. So think of these three words, perception, projection and reflection. They're very important three words. So, and it, and it takes a little while to, to grasp and, but if you can try experimenting with this concept, you'll really be surprised. Try it with something small to start with and just treat it like a game. You know, you may think that, what has this got to do with video? Well, I'll tell you, it has everything to do with how you see yourself on camera and how you want to be seen out in the world. Because I'd like you to write down now what fears are coming up for you right now around making videos for other people to watch. As soon as you can acknowledge that they are there, this is when you can start to remove them and choose not to be. So how do you want to be seen out in the world? Write that down now. Right, camera confidence is the next very important thing I'm, I'm, you know, I'm very passionate about. Now this subject I added into the content, it wasn't in your workbooks because I'm very passionate about helping women, especially in front of the camera, um, because I've come across so many that have this fear. Many of you may be thinking, I'm terrified of the camera, how on earth will I look natural and relax? Now I talk from experience here and believe me, as I had a terrible fear of the camera only as little as a year ago so much that I so much so that I had all my cameras and all my computers covered up with tape like you know black tape so if they came on accidentally without my consent I know it's a little extreme but I absolutely froze when a lens or any description was anywhere near me so when you practice enough though it really does become easier <clears throat> 
you know, I remember one time being told that, you know, I was the worst person on camera out of this whole building when people were being filmed. And <clears throat> it was terrible. I, I practiced for eight hours, you know, when they told me that I thought, oh my God, I must be so bad. So I spent eight hours on, in front of the camera talking about my own business and thinking, how is it so hard that I'm just talking about my own business? But I was actually thinking about how bad I was and how bad everyone else thought I was. And guess what? I showed up as being bad. So, you know, my self-esteem was at an all-time low, but I started thinking, you know what, I can do it too. And you know what, it was hard at first, but I was determined to get over this imaginary fear I had. So I wanted to share with you a few tips that will absolutely help you with your fear. And a couple of things that you can do are dress up before you go on camera. Feel amazing first in what you're wearing, how you hold yourself, wear high shoes, where the clothing can make a huge difference in how you overcome your fear on camera. Play an inspiring song just before you, you know, you do your camera piece. There's nothing like a really highly charged, motivated song to get you in the mood for anything that you do. So this little exercise I'd like to do with you now is to help you discover, you know, where your, help you discover your hidden talent. Okay. So write on a piece of paper, three columns. Okay, in the first column, I want you to write down who you love on camera. Now, for me, I wrote down Louis Theroux, the documentary maker. I also wrote down Julie Zamira from Rock Quiz. I wrote down uh, wrote down Carrie, Carrie from The Project as well as Richard Branson. So on the next column, I want you to write down what traits you love about these people. For me, I wrote down interview techniques, documentary style. I loved how real and quirky people were. I loved how humble that Richard Branson was. I loved how Carrie and Natasha looked on camera and how they presented themselves. And I loved how they also, you know, were fun. The last column, I'd like you to write down what traits do you share with these people? This will really help you in certain situations when you can actually think and draw on these people when you're in these situations. So I found, you know, the more natural that I was on camera, the better it looked. It also helped me to see the way that other people saw me and I started holding myself better. And it is this, you know, it, it is amazing once we embrace how we look and accepting those unique qualities that makes you stand out because that is what people actually are drawn to. So I hope that exercise was some benefit. So you should end up with three columns and you should really see a real synergy with the people that you have on the first column to what you really can see in yourself because I want you on the third column to write down what traits you share because you need to see that you have those traits that those people that you actually saw and that you like because you probably chose people that are very similar to you in some way. So when you go out there and you're doing things in, the, in certain situations, you can actually think about those people and really draw in on their skills. Think about how they would approach interview techniques or think about how they, you know, talk on camera. Think about, watch the clothes they wear. So, okay, next, next thing we're going to talk about is how we're going for time. Great. So audience, this is the one thing many businesses overlook and wonder why they don't attract the right clients. So I don't want to alarm you when I say this, but you cannot help everyone. It's really important to work out exactly who you're speaking to. So you really need to do this and dig deep and ask yourself some questions to find out who it is you really want to work with. And these customers are your audience. For example, these questions are you really want to ask yourself because every piece of marketing you put out there should really be, you should be thinking and talking directly to these people or this one person. And believe me, they exist out there. And when you have this side nailed, the rest of it is downhill from here. So I want you to ask yourself these questions. You know, what is his or her name? You know, what does she tell herself? What questions is she asking herself about her, your solution? What fear does she have? What does she worry about at night? You know, are they, is she or he married? Do they have pets? Do they have children? What is their name? You know, how often do they work? What do they do for hobbies? What do they choose to ignore? What do they look at? What are they worrying about? What do they eat? What do they lie awake about, worrying about at night? Make up a story about this person. The more specific you can be, the better. And it's really important to be passionate about what you're doing. Ask yourself, what 
is it that you want to do in your day to feel like you're moving forward and great? And what people do you want to attract while you're doing this? I find often by asking myself a question, the answer just comes into my mind straight away. We often search everywhere else for the answers, but we don't actually realize that by simply asking ourselves questions, we actually have the answers that we are seeking. They often pop into your mind as soon as you ask them. We've just been conditioned to look outside and everywhere else but within ourselves. So take out your workbook and write down now, what are the traits of your favorite client? Who is it out there that you want to work more with? Who is your audience? When I first started my own business, I, th- you know, I thought I could help everyone. No one told me any of these things and I assumed that you should be grateful for any work that you take on and anything that came to you. But now I say no, even if I really need the work. I knew that in the end, by working with the wrong clients, this costs me more stress, more time, more money, and most of all, more of the same of those clients. If everyone was working with the people they loved working with, imagine how cool that would be. And it is possible. Make sure you write in your workbook the ideas that come up for you so that you can put this into your blogs and communication that you put out there. Now, we're going to talk about the idea, your pro- we're going to go into the pre-production which it's it's a film term pre-production of your video so now it's time to get you know to look closer at the planning of your awesome video shoot the idea okay so if you're starting out making videos and have no idea where to start i suggest you start with the audience and then the idea ask yourself what message do you want to leave with your audience with what idea do you want them to take away And then I want you to think about ideas. Let your amazing mind run free. If you have no ideas right now, I want you to start watching TV. Notice the adverts. Notice the graphic design. Ask yourself, what styles do you love? What kind of videos do you want to make? You know, it's really important to find out because there's so many different types and that's what I go into in more detail later, is what kind of videos do you want to make? What kind of styles are you inspired by? You know, don't worry about anything or put constraints on yourself right now. I bet some of you are already thinking, oh, no, how do I do that? You know, that would be amazing, but, you know, I can't do that. So stop right there and let your brain run free. If you're truly inspired about the idea, you will find a way to make it work. And once you have that idea, I want you to write a one-page document called a treatment. A treatment is, you know, a way in film language, it's a a way of capturing your idea in paper so that you can start to visualize and put the components together. It helps you if if you also need to brief a designer or somebody else that maybe need need to come in at a later date. It saves you time and it gets your idea out of your mind. The treatment should contain shot types, clothing, your locations, a storyline, graphic elements, art direction, or anything else that can help you tell your story. These days, people have a short attention span, so it's important to make your video short, punchy, and not just talking to a person for a few minutes. You know, people switch off easily, and as early as 15 seconds, so you need to captivate their imagination, breaking their pattern so they stop to look at you. So after you've written down your idea, the next thing to do is to brainstorm images that reflect your idea. In the TV world, we call this a mood board. So a mood board is a collection of images on the screen that capture the mood of the message, whereas a storyboard is a scene-by-scene or shot-by-shot breakdown of the video you want to create. So look at the images that reflect your idea. Go to bookshops, browse photography books, design books shops having references a fantastic way to grow and see how things look and I used to spend hours and hours in bookshops admiring how images look and I would walk away with my brain overloaded at some times but also inspired and I wanted to make those images and I was determined to make images like the ones in the books that I saw and guess what I did Another way is if you watch Rage on a Friday night, there are so many new releases on a Friday night that you have different video styles to flood your mind with ideas with lighting, you know, different editing techniques. So before any big complex shoot, I always do a storyboard and it helps capturing the shots and also the editing process. It helps communicate your message to the crew and to other people. And it is, you know, the clearer that you can be about an idea, 
in your mind, the easier it is to produce. And that takes some practice, but a great way to see this is on paper because the more you can get on this storyboard, the more that you can see, okay, if this is going to work or not. Because, you know, often you you might change a few angles or things won't work and it's cheaper to do it on paper than it is to spend the time making it. So the first couple of videos are always going to take the longest, but don't let this put you off. Like anything, you are terrible when you start doing it, but you get better and better the more you do it. And it's just like a vision board for your life. A storyboard is no, or a mood board is no different. It's compiling images to help you see what style you're going to create. And it's easier to communicate your message. Right. So production tips. Now, lighting yourself is so important and it's a really important thing. And I find it's one of the most common things that I find that people don't get right. And this is the difference between an ordinary video and a professional video. You can light yourself in a few different ways. Um, you can light yourself with soft boxes that will give you a lovely, nice, soft light. And you should always aim to, you know, pick them up quite cheaply now on eBay. Make sure they're the brightest lights that you can get. You can, you know, the, one, the good ones start from, you know, about $60 each. And just make sure that you're getting, you know, 300 watts plus because, any less than that, then you'll find the lighting is not strong enough and you'll need more lights to make, you know, a real impact with how you come across on camera. So, again, it's all about the more you do, the better you'll be. And watching other people and watching people on TV, especially the people that you like, look at the lighting, you know, on TV and see how you can mimic what they're doing. The secret to lighting yourself is to light yourself separately from the background. You want to shine as many lamps or lights from around the house as you can with you first in the front and then light your background separately. So I'll just show you this picture here is is a picture from the late news and I just wanted to show you this example because it's actually got a really good, see how she's really lit from the front. She's lit really nice and softly and then they've created depth by putting all these lights in the background. Now she's quite a long way from the background there and they've built up these nice lighting to create a lot of depth. And, you know, there's no reason if you've got a big shed that you can't create something similar. You just need a lot of different lights and they're not that expensive these days. You can also use monitors and other reflective surfaces to practice with. <clears throat> um, yeah, another thing you can do is also buy plastic tablecloths or use sheets as backdrops. But make sure you iron out any sheets because it looks very messy with you seeing a wrinkled up sheet in the background of your video. <laughs> Excuse me. So when, you know, when you're filming testimonials or other things, you might want to go outside and make use of the morning or afternoon light because it's perfect. You don't need to get it all right first time around. And every video you're making, raise the benchmark of the quality. You know, each time you make one, just step by step, Try and learn something new or try and implement something new so that your videos just go, get better and better with every one you make. I mean, I like playing around with coloured lighting on the walls too. So I go into a bit more detail in the training, which we'll go into a bit later. So now, let me jump forward. Oh, here we go. I forgot about this. This is a diagram here where you can see there's a person sitting on a bench. We've got the camera in the front about eye level and then we've got the key light, which is the main light that is actually facing you, is the brightest and will be shining on you. And then we have a fill light, which is going to fill the other side of your face to make sure that it's light. You can also put lights above you as well if it's if you're finding it's too dark. But then you want to use a backlight, which should be a lower diffusion than the front ones so that you can create some nice mood or texture in your hair. All right, so... Next, let's get into a bit of styling. Um, there's a few no-nos when it comes to clothing on camera. Never film yourself with thin stripes. Patterns can distract the viewer and also cause havoc with some cameras. You don't want to put off your audience by wearing a strobing, flickering outfit, do you? The other thing is if you're filming in front of a, in front of a white or light background, don't wear a light colour. It really washes you out. It's a good idea also to, to select three or four outfits that you feel great in 
um, because you know some of them may not be as flattering as what you feel in when you wear them in real life on camera they often look quite different because the lights can actually wash clothing out or what you look at in the mirror isn't really what you're going to see on the camera so have a play around with different necklines in your wardrobe and see what ones work because I found that you know I've I found for a seven day challenge, we've just finished filming. I found a jumper that I'd completely forgotten about and I wouldn't wear it normally as I don't like how it sits. But the neckline was really flattering for me. So the clothes I didn't think I'd ever fit in or wear again have a new purpose. <laughs> so not that we need a reason for new clothes, do we? So, and if you're doing your makeup yourself, make sure you apply the makeup darker than you normally would. The lights wash you out, so a couple of shades darker than normal is always good. I mean, a client of mine goes to the body shop and has her face made up for her videos before she films, so it's profession professional, but it's also free. I think you, I think the only charge is that you need to charge, uh, that you get charged what makeup you use, so you can spend the same amount if it's $40. I'm not quite sure how it works, but she is happy and because she gets her makeup done free always use a matte powder or, or you know something with a powder so that you don't get any shine on your face because that can also be unflattering shine when you go out night clubbing is different to being shiny on camera it can really look like the lights are drawn and you can highlight shadows that you may not necessarily want to see so you can create shadows by shading in your cheeks and things like that if you're more experienced with makeup but make sure that it's very matte now sound there's so much to go through in video making that this is really a nutshell to help you with the main points that I've been finding online when I have a look at videos so it's important to know not to get up you know get caught up with what you don't have it's just using what you have and you know as simple as an iPhone and you know using a microphone is always going to give you a better sound and there's a there's a program called pluralize which is also syncs up your sound to images if you're more experienced this is a great program when it comes to syncing things up you know the sound is just as important as capturing the images you see people these days are so conditioned to listening to good sound as soon as they hear a bad audio track they'll often click off so keep that in mind um, <clears throat> music is also a great way when you're starting to edit a story too. There's there's copyright laws on music tracks, but you can find a very good royalty-free audio websites now and pay as little as $20 for a great audio track just for you. And when you're interviewing or talking on camera, be aware of how you're speaking. Are you using the word um or other phrases all the time to fill in the times you can't think of what to say? Um is the most popular word in the English language, so don't worry if you're not alone there. I think we've all become accustomed to, to no silence in between what we're speaking. Silence can be one of the most powerful things that you can use. I did a talk in Melbourne and I went, wanted, I wanted to actually have complete darkness and silence for 15 seconds. And can you believe that even though 15 seconds isn't very long, <clears throat> the hall had to apply for government approvals and permits for me to be able to have silence for 15 seconds in a hall. I was amazed at how hard it was to have silence in a hall of 2,500 people. Mind you, that was the most stressed that I've ever been on stage waiting for that 15 seconds to end. <clears throat> but I wanted to illustrate this, that the using lack of sound can be so powerful. And you know, it's funny, the best, my feedback from that talk was, I love that silence. I love that silence you had there. And I mean, how, how, how funny is that? You talk for 20 minutes and the, the, the most powerful message that they said was, I loved how you just had nothing. And so, you know, it was pretty funny, I thought. And we're all, especially in television, where we are designed to freak out if anything goes to air black or if black goes to air or if something, the machine breaks down, you, you know, we freak out because people switch channels. So it's just amazing to use space because I think we've all forgotten how powerful that is. So now we're going to go through camera and composition. So I often take for granted the things I've learned along the way. And this tip is one of them. It's called the rule of three. Now let me just find my little picture. The rule of thirds is based on where your eye looks on the screen. 
And it's really important to maybe use this when you're using your camera. A lot of the digital SLR cameras actually have this option as a grid that you can put up. And when you're framing your shots, it's really good to think of what is your eye going to focus on? So, you know, looking at this picture here, you can see that the bee is, you know, the bee and the flower on the left. And the main subject should be lo located around one of those intersection points instead of in the image because, you know, you just, you want to create interest in the shot. So really think about your framing and not just, you know, put you in the middle on a white wall because um, if there's nothing else there or there's no graphics or it's not cut interestingly, it can be quite boring. So just think about how you're framing it up. So, um, and also when you're filming your videos, um, make sure that you have a background that is plain because there's nothing worse than if you've got a messy bedroom and you're, or you've got a messy lounge and people are looking at your lounge room rather than listening to what you've got to say because they may be distracted by the washing you've got on the bed or they might be distracted by, you know, a piece of artwork. <laughs> so just make sure that, um, you know, you have something that's pretty plain, you know, find something that shows your personality when you're shooting. Um, and the second thing that you might want to look at is motion design. Now, motion design is really good because it, it can make you stand out. And, you know, I think it's really important to go and have a look in bookshops, go have a look at other images because 17 minutes out of every half an hour is actually motion design and you know everything from the text on the screen the weather maps you've got different um different images everywhere for you know every it can it can be very overwhelming so have a look at what design elements you really love out there and just start to see what you might be able to implement in your videos because they're very powerful so now there's also different types of shots that you can use. There's a medium close-up, which is like a newsreader. It's a little bit like what you see in a newsreader. And then there's a close-up, which is obviously just the face. And then you have a wide shot, which is like a landscape. So if you're looking at a landscape point of view, there's also an extreme close-up, which is a real close-up of somebody's face. Now, this is really important to shoot each one of these. So when you're editing your video, you can actually have different shots of your subject because there's nothing worse than just seeing the same shot the same way you know if you've got a five minute video and you only see a medium close-up it's going to get quite boring you want to switch that around a little bit so you know don't make excuses if you don't have the right gear just jump in and use whatever you have because every video that will get better I'm I'm positive of it so there's also great backgrounds you can pick up cheaply on eBay and I, you know, before spending anything, have a look around the house, see what you can find and really just put a little bit of your personality in there. Make sure you iron that sheet if you're going to have a sheet behind you and make sure that you light yourself properly. So, <clears throat> all right, so it's, um, there's so much to take in here. I hope that you're getting some important tips on how to present yourself because it does take practice. And so what we've covered so far is getting clear on who you're talking to. We also did an exercise on camera confidence and why it's important to work this muscle. It's also we've talked about perception and, you know, the world that you see out there is a world that you reflect back. We also went through, you know, why it's important today to be seen on video and why it's important to start building a brand and connecting with people using video. So as well as lots of tips and techniques to help start, you know, your videos look more professional and don't worry about them being not perfect the first time. It's really important to get them out there because I'm a recovering perfectionist myself and I completely understand where you're at. I mean, I normally work with large crews with big lighting trucks and worried about what, you know, my video is not being perfect. But, you know, at the end of the day, what is important to me is working with people who are serious about getting their stuff out there. So there's so many avenues to play your videos today. If you're serious about making videos, there's a few options that I'd seriously be considering. I'd be set, setting up your YouTube account so that you can slowly connect 
you know, build up your content and earning money long term. It certainly isn't a quick way to earn money. And of course, there's always an, an exception. So YouTube is now streamed into TVs directly in the UK. And it's only going to get bigger. As I said before, it's ridiculous thing. It's 24 hours per second goes up on YouTube. So there's, there's a lot of video content. And the thing is, it's just about constantly building up your channel. And before you know it, you have lots of videos and yours will be targeted as well. So you'll be targeting certain people to watch your video. You won't be targeting everyone. The other thing is that you want to, um, build revenue by helping more people out there is to build an online program using video. It's not as expensive as you think, and you'll be surprised at how much information is stored in your mind. So making videos to introduce yourself in a website is also really powerful. So people don't have to guess, they can instantly see who, who they're talking to and who they're doing business with because no one's going to inspire or, you know, be passionate about what you do than you. So you know, you can also send email videos that connect and inspire people. I know other people also do live, like they, they might um, do live video questions or answers or there's so many ways to connect with people these days. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and perhaps if you're really ambitious and you want to make a web series or have a great idea for a TV show, why not make an in, you know a video introduction so that you can start crowdfunding? I know quite a few people that have been very successful with this and I've had some experience with this too that I can share things not what to do. I didn't earn a huge amount doing this way but I certainly know what I would do next time to make a much bigger impact. So with video you can also make um, <clears throat> animated sequences using a few photographs and create a GIF file. So it's it's um, it's a very powerful way of making a few images together in an animated like fashion and you know it gives a movement to your photograph. I would also make a show reel about what you have to offer and make it fun. So there's so many ways to get yourself out there using video that you know is yeah <laughs> it, there's so many I can't even begin to tell you and I'm sure that you know that's why you're here because you already know that. So one of my clients earlier this year secured a $1.8 million deal after we made a video using a documentary style about their company. And this, <clears throat> this video was actually directed at this particular company, um, this, you know, financial backer. So the video was all about the company and, you know, it went for about 13 minutes, but, you know, it's a pretty good investment, don't you think? Having, having somebody that invest in you and, and you're saying everything so you don't have to worry about how you sound at the beginning of the meeting you can just press play let the video do the talking and then come back and go hey what did you think so it can be very powerful so um, I hope that you've got some valuable information there I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the program that I've got coming up first of all I wanted you to know that you can't actually buy anything from me today because I don't want you to feel like you're on the, in the middle of a sales pitch the fact of the matter is that if um, you and I work together, then I'd want to talk to you one on one. So if you want to work with me, please message me and we can have a conversation. Because like I said at the beginning of the event, it's really important to work with people that you connect with and that you want to work with because, you know, you don't want to spend the energy working with people that you don't want to work with because you end up having stress, you end up spending more money and you spend uh, you spend so much time chasing those you know, those people that it's just not worth your while. So how it works is you can either message me uh, at rachel at girldirector.tv and I will give you a phone call in the next couple of days and we can have a 30-minute chat to see how we can work together. Or you can apply online at videos.girldirector.tv forward slash consult sign up. Sorry, I'll say that again. Videos.girldirector.tv forward slash consult hyphen sign up. And here you fill in your details. And um, again, I can be in touch with you, whatever you like, or Facebook too. So September 23 is when the Video Power program kicks off. And this is an online mentoring program where I'll be working and mentoring women one-on-one -on -one to make videos they want to make. 
So it goes for two months and it gives them a lifetime of skills so they can go and go on to create content. The things that we'll be, dis we'll be covering are camera confidence. We'll be going through lighting, camera techniques, how to, how to set up your own home studio. We cover marketing and setting up landing pages as well as building your contacts. Because let's face it, once you have a lovely video, you need to do know what to do with it, don't you? So, and there's only enough room for five people. So I said earlier, I can't help everyone. And I know that not everyone will want to work with me. But for those of you who are action takers, who want to achieve big things, who want to stand in the face of fear when it comes to getting over their fear of the camera, I'll do what it takes to get you there because I'm very passionate about working with you to make the videos that you want to be making. And I have a limited number because I want to make sure that I can be of service to you all. So the eight week program is designed to empower you and give you, you know, a new subject to, to actually master each week, as well as a 30 minute coaching session every two weeks. So <clears throat> I'm very passionate and, and about being a stand for you getting what you want because, you know, I, I think that putting it off, it's just, yeah, if you've got a fear of the camera, just get in there and you can go out there and make a difference. Other people want to see what you've got to say. So even if you're remotely thinking you want to do this course, don't put it off because I'm working on another incredible global project film project that's just started taking off after five years of of you know being in its inf in its infant stages so who knows in the near future I may only run, run this course once a year so how often do you get an opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with a director who can guide you through video making process and coach you on camera to make sure you look your best so message me and I'll be in touch in a few days so to finish off I have a few tips for you um, if you're in the marketing and spending money on other things right now, um, this is based on current marketing research out there. So I want you to, if you ask marketing magazines, really stop thinking, you know, stop, uh, think about how much money you're spending marketing inside a magazine because seriously, they are on the decline and money is better spent on your website, on videos, on, on finding knowledge to get your videos out there, on Facebook adverts and building an online community with video. So think about where you're spending your money and really are they working? Because magazines don't have that instant response because people can't click a website and go and see you. Um, <clears throat> make sure that your website is optimized for a phone. Uh, and when making your videos, don't imagine you're talking to the whole world because that's daunting for anybody to imagine that. So just imagine you're talking to one person you know, it's really important to find that, find out and research like we went through at the beginning. Think about that one person you're speaking to so that the message is consistent and talk about, you know, things that you're passionate about so that people can see, people can really see if you're not being yourself. You know, look at those late night TV ads out there, the ones with the ab cruncher or the laundry detergent or you know, when people are just talking about a product, you can really see if they are faking it, can't you? So really think about how you're coming across. And if you're not passionate about the thing that you're talking about, people are really quick to perceive and their instincts these days, they just switch off. It takes about 15 seconds and they're onto something else. So being authentic is the key. So that comes to a close to our little training seminar. I hope that you know that you've got some valuable tips and info. This will be recorded if you've missed anything. Um, so if you've got any questions, um, please, yeah, let me have them. Um, has anyone got any questions out there? Uh, anyone got any questions? All right. Okay, I see one here from Catherine, I think it is Catherine. Okay, what kind of microphone should I use for my iPhone? Great question. All right, so if you're wanting to record good sound with your iPhone, you'll need to buy an iPhone adapter and a lapel microphone for interviews is the best and that'll clip into the adapter. Um, this is, you know, this is a, you can get this from places like eBay or digitalcamerawarehouse.com.au. This is where I tend to get a lot of my gear because um, they're based in Australia, they're based in Sydney and they deliver um, 
free delivery, I think, for, um, I don't know, if you spend over $40 or something. So it's really, um, there's so many different microphone options, but a lapel microphone is great for that sound that you want from interviewing somebody. Um, you also have to remember that if you're, you should get a backup. If you're recording somebody uh, out there, back it up because if you've got two audio, maybe you've got two phones or uh, a recorder or another camera, just try and get a second backup because something can go wrong. And if you're interviewing somebody for a, a testimonial for your video, you'd hate it if you got home and all of a sudden the microphone cable didn't work or something doesn't work. So you want to make sure that you actually have a backup and you know I've learned the hard way believe me where I've had you know hard drives fail or I've had a flash card fail so always have a backup because it, you know you might be just shooting that thing that you love and then all of a sudden you might get home and it just isn't working out the best way so I hope that that answers that question is there any more questions ah Okay, there's one from Tracy. Okay, what what editing software do I use? Okay, great question. All right, I use a Macintosh and I love them because they're designed for television and designers. They make life very easy when it comes to, you know, using gear. So I use Final Cut Pro and I also use iMovie and Adobe Premiere. Now for PC, um, there's a program called Premiere, which is quite advanced, but that's an editing software that's, you know, quite advanced. Whereas there's another one that's about $20. I haven't used it myself, but I've had a look at it uh, and it looks a little bit like iMovie and that's called Wondershare and that's for PCs. So it's about $20 worth checking out, um, but it looks in its looking at it. From what I can understand, it looks very similar to iMovie and I've heard some good reviews about it. So check that out. Um, okay, any more questions? Okay, so where can I buy design books? Okay, great. So design books are anywhere that, you know, is a reputable big um big bookshop you can go in and go to the design section have a look in the mo there's even a, a section called motion design or fashion photography and you can have a lot you know, I'd get away from the internet and go to these bookshops and have a look at what's in there because spending a good half an hour in a good bookshop looking at ideas can really open your mind and it's good to to also take away okay how do I want to be lit what do I want to copy what do I want to what's my benchmark and so if you have a little collection of files that inspire you with lighting techniques and design techniques, it can really help you have a benchmark. Um, that's how I started. I used to spend hours and hours at bookshops just looking over the designs and just looking at what I could then use as my benchmark. And, you know, you might get something similar or you might get something even better. And it's a really good way to learn is by having a look at what else is out there. And design books are quite pricey. Um, they can start at um, probably a good one would be 50 and they go up to, you know, $100. $100. But I have quite a few and that I just keep looking back at them and I'll find new ideas quite often. So they're really a great investment. They also can be a tax deduction, which I like. So anything else? So I think that's about all the questions. Is there any other questions? Alrighty. No more questions. Fantastic. All right. Well, I really love talking to you today and I hope that um, you've learned some valuable information. This, like I said, this will be recorded. And um, if you're interested in the, the link, let me know and um, I can send it to you. So it's about an hour and um, yeah. So have a fantastic day and Keep in touch on Facebook because I'd love to see your videos and your progress. And if you have any, any doubt or any problems with your camera confidence, give me a call and let's have a chat. Let's get you over that so that you can be making more videos to help more people. So thanks again and um, have an amazing day.